Happy New Year, people of Earth. This week we are taking a holiday break. Yeah, we deserve it. From Last Looks, and we are instead re-releasing a How Did This Get Made classic episode. Uh, it's a real uh, New Year's Eve uh, film, uh, you know, about a giant snake. Yeah, that's right. We are re-releasing Anaconda, but you know that because you already hit play. Now, even though there's no Last Looks, I want to make sure you still prep for our next movie. So next week we will be diving into the 2022 action fantasy film, The King's Daughter, starring Pierce Brosnan. This movie is weird. Uh, The King's Daughter was actually filmed in 2014 and shelved for almost seven years before it was released. The movie has about a 21% score on Rotten Tomatoes. And Claudia Pugue of KPCC Los Angeles writes, a very colorful French bonbon with no substance, and it might just give you indigestion. You can stream The King's Daughter for free on Freevee, or you can rent it on Apple TV, Amazon, YouTube, or Google Play. Also, if you have any corrections and omissions from our last episode on Dungeons & Dragons, don't worry, because we will cover both Dungeons & Dragons and The King's Daughter in our next Last Looks episode. You can still submit corrections and omissions on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm, or leave us a voicemail by calling 619-PAUL-ASK. And remember, London, Belfast, Ireland, in Glasgow. We're coming for you in March. Go to hdtgm.com uh, to find out more as well as our other live dates in Los Angeles and around the country. All right. Without any further ado, here is Anaconda. Few movies can say they have monkey guts, French John Voight, and a 40 foot long fucking snake. This movie is one of them. We saw Anaconda, so you know what that means. Hello, people of Earth! Hello, people of Brooklyn! We are live here at the Bell House. I am Paul Shear, and I am joined, as always, by my two co-hosts. Please welcome June Diane Raphael! And Jason Manzoukas! We have a... We have a very... Screw you, Brooklyn! (laughs) We have a very special guest today joining us to talk about Anaconda, the hilariously funny Michael Ian Black! Careful. You okay, babe? Yeah, I'd just like to make an entrance. Uh, (laughs) For my people. The people of Brooklyn, New York, where I now, live. You are from. You do not. You, you are from know. Connecticut, correct? <laughs> I was speaking very loosely when I said I live very in Brooklyn. Very loosely. <laughs> well, the year was 1997, and a little snake came out of the theater. Anaconda. I have never seen this movie uh, until right before this show. <laughs> Holy shit! It's per- pretty fucking fantastic. Yeah. And by fantastic, I mean this fucking movie is horrible. <laughs> they basically want you to go take everything you know about snakes, forget that, and replace it with a bunch of bullshit about snakes, and, and keep to that. That's I, what we're doing. Uh, first of all, everything was totally accurate. <laughs> no, now, I am a snake I'm scientist, I'm a, I'm a am I right? I am a herpetologist. So I know a what? herpetologist. So somebody who studies herpes. Yes. Boom! Nailed it. Boom! Boom! <laughs> I'm exhausted just from doing that. They make in the beginning of the movie. There's yes. a crawl. Yes. Oh, that that's... says these snakes exist. They grow to be 40 feet, and then they say, and once in a while they throw up the thing that they eat so that they can eat it again. Yes. Yeah. And that was that's the line. It's like they just made that up because anacondas don't kill people. I did that kind of research. 
before the show. I wanted to make well, sure I was... Also, with that, Wait a minute. By that logic, you would assume that you could actually survive an anaconda attack. Well, no, the, the acid, the stomach acid. Oh, that's what kills you. I would imagine. I didn't do that much research. I mean, but. If, you are, if you are being... Di- I mean, I think the reality is you could be alive in the anaconda's stomach as it slowly digests you. Well, because John Just Voight came, out. John Voight came out Wait, of that spoiler, scene. Wait, spoiler! Sorry. 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 Spoiler! Do not wreck Sorry. the what ending. What are you doing? Forget what you just heard. John Voight may make it through the movie. Did did anybody else, and this is also vaguely spoilery, spend the entire movie waiting for John Voight to drop the accent and be like, my real name's Mike Smith. I'm from Chicago. I've been impersonating this other guy to make you guys trust me, even though I'm the least trustworthy person in America. Everybody knows that, especially Angelina Jolie, my daughter. He never does. Spoilers, he never does. By the He's way, supposed his, to be his foreign. His accent is the best thing about Doesn't this Doesn't he say he's from Uruguay he's or something? He's a French Robert De Niro. Because he's got that, like, eh. He's always, like, he's like, got this, like, permanent, like, I'm a French guy, I'm a French guy. Is he's he talking French, French to me? No, he's yeah. South American. He's, he's South, South American. American. Okay, I thought he was he French. He says he's from Uruguay or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uruguay by way of New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, except that Marcel, who's the Marcel? What's the guy's name who's the boat captain? Mateo. Mateo, who I'm assuming was also South American, says merde at one point, which is shit in French. I thought he was playing French. I was like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) Who are these people? Where are they from? Mateo, by the way, looks like a cast member of that Showtime show Gigolos. Um, I have terrible news. He, the actor who played Mateo, is a cast member of the TV show (laughs) Gigolos. Mateo, and this is also spoiler alert, spends the film glistening. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I do want to talk about this opening. The opening of the movie has, like, um, the same way, like, Scream has Drew Barrymore get killed at the beginning. Like, there's a kill, but it's not a main character. And the the person to kill is Danny Trejo. But he was dubbed, right? Like, because Danny Trejo, that was not Danny Trejo's voice. Because it was like a light French. Does he say anything? He's he's like, oh, oh, oh. But it's like, that's, but Danny Trejo does not have that, like. You think think they dubbed? Oh, oh, oh. No, Jason. Absolutely. His voice is five octaves higher yeah. than Danny Trejo. And we met Danny Trejo on this show. <laughs> His For voice real. is deep. Well, what people don't know about Danny uh, Trejo is he's also a castrato. Oh, you see that? I didn't know that. No, I didn't know You're that. You're not spreading. That is an apocryphal story. <laughs> um, so, you oh, know, we this... also learned that, oh, well, whatever. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I want to know what we learned. What did we learn? I was going to say what we learned later when oh. Danny Trejo is killed. Yeah. I was going to jump ahead, but I think you were setting up the movie, so I was going to let you set up yeah, the okay. movie, but I'll that, we'll get to it later. But that Danny Trejo, Mateo, and John Voight are all bros from back before. <laughs> because True. in his solo weird place that the snake kills him, Trejo has, cl- has pinned up a newsprint clipping <laughs> Of the three of them together. Now, he's like, he's like, oh man, remember when I was in the newspaper? I'm gonna put that up. In By a the way, shack filled with my own feces. Technically not a spoiler because he, they do pan across that newspaper thing in the beginning. Yeah. Yes. So you can kind of see, oh, he, these guys are into bad business. Um, um, until now, I didn't realize the third guy in that picture was Mateo. I had no oh, idea. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was. It was Mateo. It was the three. Guys, how did you even like the movie then? <laughs> Wait, so you're, you're telling me that Mateo was in on the whole thing? No, oh, of no, course. No, no, not in on the whole you thing. Didn't know but when, Mateo, when John Voight comes on board, oh, wait, maybe Mateo is in on the whole thing. Wait, of course he is. Of I course didn't know he is. That. I knew that John Voight and Mateo were oh. in it together. I just didn't know. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Because when he gets on board, when he gets on board, Mateo's like, they get to do a little, like, a little See, eye thing. Like, we both are that. terrible I people. Thought, what I thought was happening, this is a classic how did this get made logic argument. Uh, it's a sleepaway camp all over again. <laughs> I thought when they picked up John Voight, Mateo knew him. But just they, they had, didn't have a pre existing. That's what I thought. He I, knew him now, from around town. I thought, and oh. then, and then the newsprint town. thing, I was like, oh, he definitely knows him. But I never made the connection. This is all part of a larger plan. Yeah. But what's the fucking plan? <laughs> to, the plan is to, to capture, capture a, a snake. Yeah. But Mateo has a boat. 
So why, why can't they, need, they use why potatoes? Why do they need the people? Right, why do they need these extra people to go upriver? They were going to sell the camera equipment to buy stuff? No. <laughs> like, is it just human bait? Maybe no, they he eat, killed a monkey for bait. Yeah. That's the true. jungle has nothing oh my but God. monkey bait. <laughs> Guys, when the snake threw up the monkey, I wrote this down: monkey vomit. <laughs> but it doesn't just like, what? It like it's Project, like, yeah. and the monkey is like, <laughs> and hits somebody in the face. It's like. It's like one of those monkeys that you get at a novelty shop where you pull back their arms and you can shoot them. It flies out at that force. And at first it's like, what did he throw up? Because it looks like a little baby. And then he's realized no, a little no, hairy monkey. It's a fucking monkey. You guys, John Voight and Matteo must have wanted to film the capturing no. of an anaconda. There's no other reason. Do you think There's no other reason. That's Mateo's quote. Do you Mateo's think at some boat. point they were like, we want to do this movie, John Voight's in, blah, and John Voight was like, you know what? I will only do it if I can play a South American character. <laughs> like, By the way, I think he's doing it quite he well. He killed it. Yeah. I think he killed it. I mean, I'm sorry. I you are wrong. Well. He did not kill it. <laughs> <laughs> um, he I, was literally horrible. I thought he was let's, pretty good. Let's have. Let's let. That let's might let, be the first literally of the night. If you're playing the How Did This Get Me a Drinking Game, drink when I say literally. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will just. I will set up the movie, and then you can be the judge of whether or not. Uh, John Voight kills it. Um, so the movie is actually, I find it very good because it lets you know, like the characters let you know their profession a lot and, and their names. So it's like, hey, Barry, oh, I'm the DP. All right. And they, they, they basically, it's like, well, I'm the cameraman. Well, I'm the producer. Like they just, they meet. It's a, about a documentary film crew. Jennifer Lopez, this is her big chance to be a great documentary filmmaker. Uh, Ice Cube is her a cameraman who we first meet him is looking through a okay. lens. Wait a second. But he's using a video camera the rest of the movie. <laughs> Can I say the most insane thing, which is that Cube's first line... <laughs> right? Who, anybody, go. It's gonna be a good day, which is an Ice Cube lyric. Which was amazing. I kept I, at some point be waiting for him to use an AK. Well, that's why he didn't bring the AK. Because it was a good day. It was he a didn't good even day. need to use his AK. He didn't need to use it. I just about shit my pants oh, I was when excited. that happened. I was excited I for was that. like, that? And there was another one, too. What's the other song lyric in this? Somebody? Anybody? Welcome Home? to the jungle? Yes! Yes! <laughs> no, that's what it is. No. Yes, Owen Wilson. You know where you are? You're in the middle of the jungle. Yeah, well, that's... That's, that's pretty not, good. That's not close. That's pretty much For a movie that that's takes pretty place close. In the jungle. That's it. pretty no. close. You're he reading it. That's Jason. pretty close. If he had said you're in the jungle, baby, then we could have gone um, like, all right. It's so crazy that they spend so much time introducing these characters when there's no, there's no, there are no cuts in this movie to other locations or places. There's no way we could get confused. They all stay together on a giant raft. Uh, in the a whole way, time. I almost feel like this documentary crew is too big because Eric, Ro uh, Eric, uh, what's his name? Uh, Schultz. Eric Stoltz. Thank you. The original oh, yeah, the Martin way, McFly. Eric Stoltz is in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Eric Stoltz is sort kind of. of like he's kind of the guy who's doing the research, but then they got a guy in the front of the camera who's like the face. When but then ever they got is there a Lopez. nature documentary where the British guy who does the voiceover is in front of the camera? I don't, I feel like I never see that. Richard Edinburgh's, is he in the middle of the shop being like, the giant snake finds its way? No. Did not do that. So they're, they're basically on a, they're on a houseboat going down the, uh, the river to make a documentary about a tribe that doesn't exist. They bump into John Voight. That's about all the plot you need to know until the fact that a giant snake comes into it. Um, should we just, uh, just to, to kind of let you guys see what John Voight does in this movie. Um, this, is, uh, uh, this is a scene that I think kind of sums up John Voight here. Um, guys, try not to jerk off during this. Because it's pretty fucking sexy. All right, here we go. What the hell is this? Anaconda skin. Is snakes out there this big? This skin is three or four years old. Whatever shed it has grown since then. But something like this has made a meal of our dear captain. What? Snakes don't eat people. Oh, they don't? Anacondas are a perfect killing machine. They have heat sensors. 
a warm body like Mateos in the water. Wasn't hard to find. <laughs> All hands. A strike, wrap around you, hold you tighter than your true love, and you get the privilege of hearing your bones break before the power of the embrace causes your veins to explode. Explode. He and definitely the, just amazing. said explode. <laughs> E S S plode. Explode. He's Guns half Puerto your... Rican. I mean, that part doesn't come out until the sequel, but he was half yes. Puerto Rican. There are three sequels to this movie. See, here's what you don't understand Two of them are about. TV movies. Here's what you don't understand about his performance. He's he's actually he's a crazy person in the movie, but who's also as that character leaning into his craziness, leaning into expressing his craziness. And I know you want to pull him back. You want, I, I want, ask you not to. I do. I want to rein in the voice. See, I think that's an amazing performance. He For killed it. Do you guys think it was Do you, you guys think he killed crazy. it? Do you guys think he didn't kill it? About 50 50. That's the kind of oh. debate that this movie can engender. You guys are idiots. Um, the snake, by the way, if you're familiar with the Universal Studios tour, looks less realistic than that giant Jaws that jumps out at your tram. Like, it looks, it looks fake. Like, it looks cheap and fake. Strongly disagree. <laughs> I like that, I like that the, <laughs> everything is basically like a comment section of a blog post. <laughs> Well, strongly disagree. First. Best snake ever. <laughs> Paul, if First. you'd, if you'd yeah. ever spent any time Wait a second, we're, on the Amazon, mm -hmm. and if you'd act ever actually come across the anaconda, <laughs> you would know that they sometimes look animatronic <laughs> as a way to lure <laughs> oh, okay. unsuspecting hipsters into a false sense of irony. <laughs> and they're that's when they strike. Get their picture with it or mm -hmm. something. Right. Now, Michael Ian Black, do they also make those noises that the snake made in the movie? Yes. Do they, do they at certain points say, <laughs> Oh my God, that was terrifying. I would have not have been surprised if that snake at the end of the movie was like, Eat human. Like it was, it was building to the snake talking. I felt, I felt that he made so much noise uh, that he Remember, was gonna talk. It's parcel tongue. You guys know parcel tongue. Right? <laughs> yes, of course. Harry Potter would have known what was. They should have got Harry Potter on that boat. Oh, what's the snake's name? Nagini. Nagini was in this movie. That's Ugh. a deep Harry Potter reference. What I like about this movie, too, is they did not run out of shots of the boat driving on the river. Uh, I well, would but say... they have to establish, just in case you forgot, they're still on this same boat on this same river. I would argue that it might be the same shot all 35 times. Well, what I think is, I think they cut together the movie. The movie was 45 minutes long. And they were like, ay, 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 what are we going to do? They just said, put in a bunch of footage of the boat just on the river. More boat footage and more just John Voight leering at people. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, they That's just it. cut them like, eh, eh. Why would you ever trust this guy? He never came on as a genial, like, happy fella. Guys, Owen Wilson is in this movie. <laughs> I mean, we're like 20 minutes in, have not talked about the fact that Owen Wilson is in this movie. He is big. A lot of the times in the reviews I read as comic relief. I didn't see that element of his performance. S strongly disagree. Yeah. Did you like it when I think one of his opening lines is like, man, the jungle makes me so horny. Yes. Yeah. That is in fact his opening line. Is it me or does the jungle make you really horny? And then she's like, come on, I'm trying to work. No, she then says, it makes me horny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she says, it's she the dead? jungle, I think. Oh, okay. But she's basically saying, yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. fuck. By the way, <laughs> yeah, who we're talking about is Carrie Wurr from Old School Remote Control and Beastmaster. So she is well, what just was no her reason. role in the crew? She was the she's UPM, the, like the line producer, right? What? 
No, was she, no, Owen, no Owen, Wilson Owen Wilson was sound. sound. Yeah, because she said at one point she's like, "Oh, I gotta produce this." Like, well, but here's the thing. But she does, she I'm, does go to get wild sound in the middle of the night. Yeah, well, with Owen Wilson, and they talk throughout the entire time <laughs> yeah. of getting wild sound. Also, guys, keep in mind, she did make a pretty nice salad. <laughs> I don't remember that. Remember that? I don't she makes, that. she goes, at one point she goes, I made a salad. That produces like a kitchen grade, salad, like a beautiful big salad. And I was like, no fucking way you had all that. This is, you're on like a death trap in the middle of the fucking river. There's no way you made that salad. It is the most low budge documentary. Like, and they're finding the, the people that was called like the tribe of the mist. It was like, it was so well, not well thought out. Um, the, f- the first killing uh, in real time happens in 44 minutes in when uh, Mateo uh, poor, meets Poor him. Mateo. Poor, poor Mateo. sweet, oh. listening Mateo. Poor beautiful, beautiful, dumb Mateo. <laughs> Mateo gets killed or disappears. Like they're all within 20 feet of each other. And they all can see each other, and Mateo disappears, and they just assume he's lost. No one wants to admit that he was killed by this giant snake, which we've all seen at this point. Well, but they haven't seen they it. They haven't seen it. Didn't they the know it anaconda. exists, though, at that yeah, point? Yeah, no, he's really, been telling them about it. they don't really it. believe that the snake exists. They're like, oh, Mateo, it's like, oh, he went out to go get something. He's probably at the store. <laughs> no, chances are, if he didn't see him anymore, he's dead. <laughs> But no one admits that Mateo is dead. John Voigt, I feel like, pretty quickly sizes up the situation. Well, yes. Well, well he knows. He was in on it, apparently. Well, yeah, well I don't because think he you know, to die. you know, he's he's making his he's filling his crossbow arrows full of reptile tranquilizer. <laughs> but wait, Jason, how did you know it was reptile tranquilizer? Well, Michael, I knew it was reptile tranquilizer because it was written in enormous letters on the clear glass bottle that he was taking it from. Ah. Uh. Hey, now what's the difference between reptile tranquilizers and regular tranquilizers? Hey, Jude, don't ask so many questions. <laughs> it, 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 it tranquilizes the cold-blooded animals. Ah. Right? There is literally what? there is literally a line at one point in this movie like, "Well, what are we doing again? We're going down this river <laughs> and we're going to find this thing." Like they, they literally it? check in with a line just to reset the plot. How about when they're like, "We got to get out of here," blah blah blah, and John Voight's like, "No, we're going after the snake." And Owen Wilson is like, "Yeah, guys, we got to go after the snake because we got to stick with him, blah, blah, blah. And the entire time Owen Wilson is making this big speech, John Boyd is just loading guns behind him. He loads like three separate weapons in the background, just like... Now, meanwhile, John Voight didn't come on the boat with these weapons. He jumped on the boat from another boat, tackling Owen Wilson. Somehow, Owen Wilson got on top in that situation, even though John Voight jumped on him. Um, but he came weaponless, uh, without any gear, and he wait, gets all. Wait, you guys, the... Mateo couldn't been, could not have been a part of it. Did anybody? Why? Else? Wait, 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 Mateo wait. could what? not have been a part of the master plan <laughs> wait because a they changed direction and they changed course after Mateo died. Well, that's when John. That's when John. I mean, no, oh, but I think okay. If Mateo was alive, they would have changed course. I think but now they that I think about right it. After. I think the plan was Mateo was going to get John Voight, and then they together were going to go to Danny Trejo. Oh, because right. the three of them are bros from the newspaper. <laughs> and they had planned, well, basically, like, John Voight kind of lures uh, Owen Wilson. And he's like, we're going to capture the snake. You'll be a millionaire. But they never seem to have, like, a plan on, like, they, they run into the snake a, f- a ton of times. There's never really a trap until the end. But it seems like there's never a trap, like, Well, I think set. the master plan was to get there. Oh, Really? To get to that abandoned warehouse? Yeah. Wait, to Boiler get to, the, uh, to Trejo's warehouse or the, ab- the big abandoned warehouse? Big warehouse at the end. Oh, all right. Wait. Did anybody else notice? Let me ask you this. Mateo, we're unclear where Mateo is from, right? But let's assume that, the, that you're going to call someone chief in Spanish. What do you call them? Jefe, right? Does anybody know what Mateo calls everybody who he calls chief in this movie? Jefe. Jefe. <laughs> I thought about this. You did? I thought about this. What did you come up with? I was confounded by this. Mateo, and he's only really calling it to Eric Stoltz. He's calling Eric Stoltz Jeffe. And in my mind, it's because Eric Stoltz uh, is a stupid janky. And so he's mocking him by calling him Jeffe. I like that. I think it was a character choice. Ooh, I like that. They do treat Mateo pretty bad. Like, J-Lo first meets Mateo, and she's like, do you understand me? And he's like, yeah. 
Mateo has no problem with the English language that we have seen. Like, he was never like, I don't under... Like, he was crystal clear, ready to go. So I think maybe he wasn't on it to teach the way, Yankees for, a lesson. For a documentary filmmaker, J-Lo actively does not want to shoot real-life moments that are happening in front of her. And when they do shoot, they're getting a lot of people in the shot. They're not like... It's, they're also, shooting a movie. Oh, yes, that and, and Cube is moving the camera a lot. He's like... Like, left, right, left. It's like paranormal activity. It's like... Like, it is... The footage would be And by be the way, it's useless. a video... It's a video camera. It is an old school, like, 1997, I bought it at Best Buy video camera. Like, if you're you saying that... To... I'm sorry, I have to... I have to disagree here. <laughs> There's clearly a shot. Now, I don't know if you switched cameras... Uh -huh. I don't know what the fuck happened. Maybe he had a video camera at one point, but there's clearly a shot where he's wading through the river and he's got film canisters on the back of that <laughs> camera. I noted that. Yeah. Well, because Because most, I'm in the business. Most filmmakers wear film canisters <laughs> like people wear bullets in case they run out and they quickly have to like, boom, throw, another, <laughs> throw another reel of film in here. No, it's in the camera. It's a film camera. All right, oh. all right. All right. Fuck you! <laughs> okay. There's like, a lot of things to criticize this movie about. His choice of cameras and what of them. I would love, I would love it. I would love it if there was an extra feature on this DVD, which was the footage that Ice Cube uh. shot. <laughs> if you could just watch that. It's the kind, it would be like way crazier crazy. than Blair Witch. Actually, when you It would be like, just like. Is it crazy to say that? It's crazy that. Uh... I was going to say, when you watch his footage, it's actually, are we there yet? <laughs> Boom! Taking Ice Cube to task. Um. <laughs> Put him on the, how did this get made? Grudge list. <laughs> um, the, the, snake, the snake is attacking at certain points, and Ice Cube never runs for that camera. I would say that when the snake is attacking that boat, his camera is the last priority for Ice Cube. The documentary is not about the anaconda, Paul. It's about the people of the mist. People of the mist. <laughs> so he does not want to get this action-packed footage. Like, at one point, John Voight's like, don't you want to get a camera and get this? And he's like... She's like, no. oh, yeah, yeah, get that camera. <laughs> uh, Ice Cube also tries to attack. He gets up like a guy in a bar trying to fight the snake with a, with a little knife. He's like, hey, man, stab you with my little baby knife. And the snake quickly knocks it out of his hand, <laughs> sends his pen knife overboard. I wrote down this. I don't know if this is even worth We haven't about. talked about the snake cam. Like oh. the, snakes, like the snake POV. You. Yeah. Which was almost at times inseparable from wide shots. Yeah. So there would be like a point of view camera of the snake. But it would tilt. Yeah. It would get to a Dutch Slight angle. Tilt it, and then Whoa. there would just be a wide shot of the river and the boat. And I'd be like, is this the snake too? <laughs> One and then time there's I was... also inside the snake cam. Yeah. yeah. I have that. I have that. Um, we well, should explain I mean, how we get to that. Well, yeah, I mean, we can show it at the end. I mean, because it's kind of a big spoiler. But basically, <laughs> Which I mean, June has already spoiled. We'll get, we'll get to it because I don't want, I don't want to miss out on some great moments. Um, what? Well, well, basically now they're getting the vibe that John Voight is not so cool. Why? Because he's... Well, he's turning into a snake. <laughs> he literally is. I wrote that down. He is a snake. He's turning into a snake. Here is my proof of that with this scene, another great John Voight classic scene where you're going to continue to believe that he killed it. This is after Owen Wilson is killed and we see Owen Wilson's body um, inside the snake's body. And this is uh, Carrie Wurr comes to confront uh, John Voight. Here we go. Are you going to pray? Never look in the eyes of those you kill. They will haunt you forever. I know. Very loose. 
loosely tied. He is a man tied to a pole who jumps straight up into the air and wraps his legs around another human being's body. I'm impressed. Voight got hops. (laughs) What is he saying to her at the end? Praying for her. You guys know it. I love this. You guys are the smartest crowd that we've ever had. You guys don't have to be fucking smug about it. Jeez. Hey, he's praying. Duh. Oh, he's a priest, asshole. Fuck you guys. I hate this show. Goodbye. Once they finally get rid of John Voight, um, like they, they shoot him with one of the reptile tranquilizers, and he falls in the water, and then there's the most poorly added ADR line, where it's just like Ice Cube off camera. He's like, Sam, the dart just fell out of his back. <laughs> just in case anyone had, because he's going to come back, of course. Because there's a lot of, because in my mind, I was like, oh, oh boy, where'd that dart go? <laughs> I'm thinking mean, what everybody's thinking. Damn, that dart came out of his back. It's the best line. <laughs> um, man, there's so I, much- Oh, the other thing I thought at a certain point was because of what the movie is, going up a boat in search of something hopeless, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I felt like John Voight was doing Brando in Apocalypse Now. Like weird, because he was really kind of like, he got a little bit like yeah. this. He I, was Marlon De Niro I, in I, this. I th- yeah, I, th- I felt like he was, he was giving us a little bit of Brando Apocalypse Now. Um, also, his hair is insane. <laughs> do you think, it, Michael, do you think uh, it was a choice to make John Voight look snake-like? Because I was watching that clip, and I believe that his skin looks a little bit more snaky. The thing that you have to understand about Anaconda, Paul, <laughs> yeah. is not that the Anaconda is the snake. Right. And it's not that John Voight is the snake. Got it. Mm. We are all the snake. <laughs> Like oh, that. shit. There's like a little that. bit of anaconda in all of us. And like when you that. travel down that long river, when you shed your skin, Paul, <laughs> your like anaconda will be revealed. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Please. Is it true uh, about the anaconda that, that my anaconda don't want none <laughs> unless... She got buns. Buns, hun. Also, baby got back. I can't tell if you're being rhetorical now or not. (laughs) (laughs) Because I can answer that question for you. I would love an answer. Yes. It was rhetorical. We haven't really gotten into Jennifer Lopez at all. Do you find, June, did you find that Jennifer Lopez was a strong uh, a female leader in this film? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thought it was interesting that they didn't, they basically had one of their leads asleep the entire movie. <laughs> Eric Stoltz so, is asleep. Yeah, right. so a lot fell on her shoulders, he, I think unfairly. I actually thought during the well, movie... Well, it wasn't, like, it wasn't well, like that happened by accident. That no, was but I had the thought during the movie, I think they must have, right before they started filming, had some major scheduling problems with Eric Stoltz. Like, geez, he couldn't be there for no, like no, most of on. the movie. He was filming Mask the, 2. Right. Why? Which was Yet to be sadly released. Point, never released. But also shot by Ice Cube, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> the point was that J. Lo was an emerging star and Eric Stoltz really hadn't done that much. Nobody wanted to see Eric Stoltz. We wanted to see J. Lo. Yeah. We wanted to see her What was weird emerge. is that they established a love story for them and, and then, then he just went did. away. Well, I thought that was really well, by bizarre. The way, he also, I mean, the way he goes away is he goes down to fix the propeller of the boat and he swallows some sort of bug that paralyzes Lost. him. And they never, they never explain where that bug is. Yes, like, they do. John Voight says he did it. Yeah. But he doesn't say how he how did it. How do you get that bug? Because he's wearing a respirator. In there. I'll, tell you, respirator. I'll tell you how. Okay. <laughs> he stuck the bug in, a t- in the tube that oh, went wow, into the Oh, wow, the audience tank. agrees. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. He wait, stuck it a, in the scuba tube. A, I have a question. Why did all the girls in the audience be like, yes, yes, yes? Yes, June is right. So why don't you guys just shut the fuck up and listen to June? (laughs) That was racist. 
I want to say that I think Jennifer Lopez, of everybody in that movie, acquitted herself the best. I agree. In a no-win situation, she lost as little as anybody possibly could have. She got, I mean, she got her man, right? I mean, because Eric Stoltz does not die. I'm not even saying in story terms. Okay. I'm saying in career terms and no, credibility this, terms. This blew her up. I mean, this is the movie. This is like Selena, Anaconda, and then boom. Mm -hmm. Made in Manhattan eventually. <laughs> but I, Oh, thank God. But I mean, this is probably the movie that got her the, uh, the Out of Sight film. Probably. The, yeah, no. This is the next she's one right Selena after it. Did. She's tough in Anaconda, and she's credible. Yes. Because she comes from, as Ice Cube says, the SC, which I had to figure out what that was. <laughs> Santa Southern Cruz? California? Yes. Santa Cruz? Uh, I thought it was Southern California. Oh, uh, yeah, that's think? what I thought, Southern California. Yeah. But I had to go through a lot of SCs before I got there. South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> I spent a little bit of time on Santa Claus, which was weird. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I did semester abroad at Santa Claus. But another thing that I don't think is, is really dwelt on at all in the movie is that Eric Stoltz, while he's awake, is an asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's not he's a good dude. He's the biggest know-it-all, sanctimonious prick in the world who you feel like just wants to... Gave, gave Jennifer Lopez this opportunity just to fuck her. Not that he really has any interest in her as and an And he artist. disrespects yeah. everybody. He's well, disrespectful. Well, Eric Stoltz and J Lo already they had J -Lo. had a J -Lo. J Lo. They had had they had had a relationship before this. I, I thought know. they were in a relationship. Uh, well, he says I, I think missed it's really you. complicated. They had like a, like a one night Myers. stand that may have turned into like a two night stand that then they haven't seen each other, but now he's excited because she's gonna have a big break making this documentary and they're gonna get it back on in the Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 because just like an anaconda, he also likes big butts. God, God, that's pro By the way, you don't want the anaconda to come after you? Give it J-Lo, because anacondas like big butts. Sir Mix-a-Lot tells us so. But why put him to sleep the whole movie? I, I'm genuinely wondering. Because he knows everything. So because he's such a fucking sanctimonious know-it-all, if he's not asleep... <laughs> Everybody would be like, Eric, well, what should we do? And he'll tell them. Think, do, you think that Eric Stoltz, <laughs> do you think that Eric Stoltz was reading the script and was like, okay, good, here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, my God, I think well, Eric then, Stoltz was thrilled when he read this script. Eric Stoltz gets to sleep for 70% of this movie. It really And then is. he has his comeback. He comes and saves the day. Yeah. Eric Stoltz has a great... is pointless. It, like it, his character didn't even need Completely to exist. Pointless. No. Well, no, they just need more people on that boat so they could keep on getting killing people. Like it was, it was like that's why there's like three producers and like and then the host of the thing is different than Eric Stoltz because Eric Stoltz should be the host, but it's the British guy who drinks out of a chalice. Me? And that's how we know he's, he's drunk. Not... And plays. And he plays literally golf. drinks out of a chalice. Did it? Uh, maybe they felt like you know what? Oh, we've got Stoltz. Stoltz is in. He is so powerful and commanding a presence that John Voight would never be able to commandeer the boat if Stoltz was there, because Stoltz would obviously Rambo style just destroy John Voight. I I think I think it was more of a producer in Hollywood going, "We got this movie. It's called Anaconda." It's going to be great. And they just called everyone in town. And then they're like, hey, we got 12 people said yes. They'll all be in the movie. You're the cameraman. You're the producer. You're another kind of producer. You're a host. You're the backstage host. You're the director. You're another producer. <laughs> they okay, just assigned it after they had... But if you're, but if you're John Voight, why do you keep Eric Stoltz alive? Well, he could, well but he has, no, he has no need to kill him. I mean, that, that, I think that would interfere with the plan. If Eric Stoltz dies... Then they're going to turn the their plan. <laughs> then there, then some of well, know by now. murder. Then there has been a clear murder, exactly. and they would have to look into that. The plan is to capture the anaconda, but the boat that they have is not equipped to even carry. I mean, the anaconda. We haven't well, even talked the about the question. anaconda. The anaconda <laughs> defies the an all laws. Or Paul. It flies. It yeah. moves quicker than anything. It is not a, it's not, I mean, it's for the it's, way it's that it It's immune to fire, we find out yes. at the end. Yeah. I, will, I will go so far as to say we're calling it an anaconda. An, an, anaconda. What? <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Um, but I believe it's anaconda because there is more than one anaconda. We were talking movie. about this. We, 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 we benched this discussion backstage. Are there more than two? Because I think one is red, but they shoot one in the head. There's the green one they shoot in the head, and then there's the black one that's in the factory. 
Okay, so there are two, but no. they don't really make it clear, like, oh, there's another one. No. And is, the, is, is one of them, do we presume, the one that killed Trejo? Like, is don't there, okay, know. this is what I thought, because this is where I started to go, whoa, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 stop the clock. Now, is, okay, you know they're in the newspaper thing and they've got a big snake, right? Yeah. Is, are the anaconda seeking revenge like Jaws 4? That's what I thought. On Voight, Trejo, Ma Mateo. But they... And these people are caught in the crossfire of, an, of a sentient? Well, the, the snake is definitely intelligent? sentient. Intelligent? The snake is no... Diabolic snake. Snakes. Snakes in a river, guys. But the only Get these reason... motherfucking snakes out of my motherfucking river. <laughs> the only reason why I would say the snake is not sentient is it doesn't often go after John Voight. It goes after a lot of other people. Like That's John, right. Yeah. It's not a revenge fantasy for the snake. Yeah. My, my question, which only arose at the end when they're at the Anaconda factory... Yes. ...is... They seem to be harvesting anacondas. Yes. yes so why do they need too. to capture a live anaconda when they're when they've got a they've got a breeding farm for anacondas? I don't know. I don't know who owns that anaconda farm. I don't know why. I don't understand a lot of it because for the majority of the movie, we are led to believe that this forty foot long anaconda is the thing. It's like it's almost like if you watched all of Jaws, they killed Jaws like at like hour and ten minutes, like, oh, and then there's another Jaws. <laughs> no, what? it's not just that. They Let kill Jaws, and then everybody's like, everybody be like, oh, phew, and then they go someplace else, and there's just another Jaws. That looks almost exactly like the other Jaws. And then, when they go to that place, there's a million tiny Jaws. Um, I want to show you guys, uh, we talked about it earlier, I want to show you guys uh, <laughs> what happens when a snake does kill somebody, uh, just so you guys can see, this is one of my favorite kills. Um, there, we have two. I can maybe show them back to back. This is uh, this is the kind of I said the snake kind of defies logic. This is a great way to show you this. Here we go. The snake is so able to. The snake is so able to move and be dexterous. Like the guy jumps off a waterfall. We can, we can pull up the screen. Uh, that we, the, he jumps off a waterfall. That snake is able to get him, wrap him up, take him home. It's good. But the snake was just in the water a second ago. Yes. Now it it's wrapped up, up in a tree f like 80 feet high. Yeah, that it happens, got up that tree very quickly. That happens a lot. The snake is like literally like snakes in this shot and then cut right here. Snake's also here. Well, my thought is maybe there are just hundreds of these snakes or they're tree elevators. Uh, where the snake got on it. Or the broke. snake. One or the other. Or the snake is a teleporter. Ooh, I like, like that. the X Men Nightcrawler. Well, the snake, the snake definitely has Bam. heat sensors. Oh, I wanted to show this you one quick clip. You fucking nerds. Before you, <laughs> you fucking nerds. Before you do, though, Paul, yes, please. I'd like to point out that right after the scene uh, that you just paused, you see the giant tree being uprooted. Yes. That tree then falls on the boat. Yes. As a result of the tree falling on the boat, Eric Stoltz wakes up. <laughs> Out of his coma. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't... You see, a, a lot, lot of, of shit's been going down all right up until that point, but it's the tree sort of falling in. And, and, and you see, loud. it's loud enough, he kind of goes, oh, shit, where am now, I? But isn't, isn't that that famous statement, if a tree falls in the jungle, will Eric Stoltz hear it? <laughs> that's where that, that that's statement where originates yeah. from. Yep. I want this is uh, this is not going to be visual for people who are listening, um, or is going to be visual. This is something. Just see if you notice. Well, I'm going to tell you what to notice. Great camera work here. They clearly did not have this shot, so they just ran it backwards. So watch the waterfall in this scene. It's apparently it's very clear if you're looking at the waterfall. So take a look here. We're going to dim it down. It's quick. All right, here we go. There it is. They just ran the footage backwards. No, Paul. That's not I'm what's happening. I'm sorry. 
That's I, not what's I, happening. Okay, no, hang on, hang on. No, it makes I sense. Think the that boat is in reverse, Paul. No, no, no. So this that guy's... explains it. No, no, no. This is easy. They're in, they're in South America. Oh. Water goes backwards. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got You're it. on the other side of the equator. Things go in reverse. That makes sense. Like toilets in Australia. Well, I want to open it up to you Australia guys, the audience. Toilet. So if you have questions about Anaconda we have not asked, I'm going to come down to you. So just raise your hand. And don't be too weird. Okay. All right, Hugh. All right, here in the Punisher shirt. Okay, we'll get to you. I won't hold, I'll hold on to the mic. What's your name? Your favorite color? Good question. Go. My name is Jared. My favorite color, color is purple. And did you guys not hear some Scarface in John Voight's performance? Or eh? was it Scarface inspired? That's yeah, the question. That, that could be an interesting one. Yeah. All right. You I like that. Us. I like that idea. All right. I like that idea. You don't think skates snakesy people? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Say right. hello to my little snake. snake. <laughs> All right, what's your, what's your question? My question is, who are they going to sell this snake to for millions? Which Such a good question. That is a good question. That is a they, actually, a good question. they actually do say it on the DVD extras. Michael they were going to sell it to the producers. Michael Jackson. They were going to sell it to the producers of Anaconda to have a more realistic looking snake for their movie. By the way, one thing we did before the question, one thing we didn't talk about is when J-Lo goes into John Voight's dressing area. Okay, that's an amazing scene. I know we have to get to it, but right before she goes in, she's like sexying herself up in the mirror and puts on a lipstick that is the oh, exact yeah. color of her skin, of her lips. There's no color, and then she walks I out like, that. yeah, I did it. I found that part. I did it. I found that part deeply erotic. All right, here's another question. Here we go. Do you guys think that Tommy Wiseau drew some inspiration from John Voight's performance in Anaconda in his <laughs> performance in the room? That's a great yeah, I question. I do like that. That's I like that great... you had to say Tommy Wiseau's performance in the room as if he has been in other things. <laughs> Say, as, if, as if his character in the room, Johnny, is that his name? Yes. Is yeah. a character. <laughs> that is a human being. That is a life experience. I would love it if in the middle of this movie, John, uh, John Voight had been like, do you guys want to play football? Hey, man. Toss it around. I don't understand its structure of play. Here's a question over here. Go for it. I believe when uh, Ice Cube plays some music on his jukebox, he's playing an Ice Cube song. <laughs> yeah. I checked. I checked. I thought... It's not an Ice Cube song. It's um, it's not. I did it. I did a little bit of research on that. I he wouldn't sell them the NWA songs. I bet. No, I don't know if that's true. Oh, uh, but amazing. no, it was uh, it was a it was a rapper. It was not him, but it was close. It. What well, was it? Mac it was, Ten. It was Mac Ten. It's also worth. But life. it is. But Cube is on that track. Both, he was on that track. This guy oh. is saying Cube is on that track. It's worth noting because because I, I just for clarity and scientific objectivity, it was not a jukebox. Yeah. It would have been weird if Ice Cube had, had a jukebox on the boat. <laughs> Sometimes he like it would have fit in. As it was weird before as it was. the iPod Shuffle, so he didn't. He wanted it was a to boombox. It was a boombox. All right, here we go. Let, last question. If it's bad, it won't be the last question. Uh, what about the tracheotomy? Yeah. Oh, the tracheotomy. tracheotomy is good, good question. What about that tracheotomy? What do you want to know? I mean, he performed a serviceable tracheotomy under the circumstances. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. If he wanted to kill Eric Stoltz, he would have performed a bad tracheotomy. Well, right? but what was Eric Stoltz really recovering from? That's his what I don't pipe quite was paralyzed. Bug. Remember? But was he trying to get poison out of his body, or was he just recovering oh, from get the, the poison out of He had a swollen area. pipe. Right. But why was he not conscious? Because he, he lost oxygen to the brain, he passed out. The only way to get him breathing again was to perform an emergency <laughs> boat tracheotomy. But wait, here's the thing. You perform a tracheotomy when from here to here is blocked, right? Well, so yeah, you have to open the windpipe nothing, here. But by the way, but yes, but after the bug came out, there was no, nothing blocking his windpipe. That's what I'm saying. So is there any the doctor in the house that can dispute John Voight's wait a minute. medical wait opinion? Wait a minute. Paralytic river wasp poison <laughs> will paralyze your windpipe. Getting rid of the bug doesn't unparalyze your windpipe. You need, the, only, the only thing that can do that well, is part windpipe, is time. If, it, if a windpipe is I paralyzed, it just means it's staying still. It'll be fine. Oh, when the swelling yeah, goes down, yes. Move. All right, well, we have a question over here. Sir, what's your question? I just wanted to gauge the commentators on what was your favorite puppet death. 
Uh, there was the panther in the beginning who got squeezed to death and an eyeball popped out of its head. Oh, the panther? And made the yeah. Arr, Scooby-Doo's face. And then there's the monkey who gets puked up on someone else. And then there's the anaconda who gets shot at point black range with a sniper rifle. Yeah. Well, what's interesting so is when questions. John Voight dies at the end, spoiler alert, he... He winks. He winks, but with no eyes. No, no, he winks with one eye when he's, when he's regurgitated. Well, right, when he's regurgitated, but, but one eye popped out, is what I'm saying. We can still but be he effective with one eye. Right, right, no, I love the wink. You guys, I love the wink. <laughs> the wink is the best thing of the movie. But he wasn't squeezed to death, is what I'm saying. He I was think just he eaten. was, but I don't think both of his eyes popped out. So my answer to you, my answer Wait, to you is the, 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 the monkey, the sock Boy. monkey, the sock monkey death is the best death. Oh, see, my favorite death was the panther, because panther is such a deadly animal, and to watch it be like, <laughs> <laughs> he made and the Tim it, Allen noise, and then and it drags. It's like I love this the shot where it's like the, the the snake drags the panther away, and the camera lingers on just the eyeball. <laughs> All that's left in the shot is an eyeball. I was like, that's pretty fucking hot. Couple, couple things I want to just point out to you guys. This movie was nominated for six Razzie Awards. Uh, what I like here is worst screen couple, John Voight and the Snake. <laughs> and and uh, worst new star, the animatronic Anaconda. Here's the thing. The movie was uh, roundly panned by most critics. However, Roger Ebert gave it oh. three and a half out of four stars. These people it. right here in the front row, like the anticipation of you saying that, they all started hitting each other. Like, he's gonna say the thing about Roger Ebert. He's gonna say it. And then you said, Roger Ebert. And then I went, ah, ah. Everybody the, in the front row just came at once. That's what the power of Ebert's old reviews. Um, he called it a slick, scary, funny creature feature beautifully photographed and splendidly acted. Uh, one other thing that I thought was great about this, during the filming, one scene, the controls for the animatronic anaconda shorted out, causing it to completely lose control, and some of that footage is used in the movie. <laughs> Also, for every minute that you see that anaconda on screen, it was a hundred thousand dollars in CGI. Really? Hundred thousand dollars per it minute. Uh, it cost forty-five million and made a whopping one hundred and thirty-seven million. Wow! Oh, really? Huge hit. Wow. Huge, huge hit. Might be ready for a reboot. <laughs> Maybe. Look, I don't mean to brag. I was in Prono 3D and 3 Double D. I have a lot of experience with boats and deadly fish. Um, I can do this. All right, so obviously we had opinions about the movie, but now is a chance to look at people who have uh, a different opinion. It is now time for some five-star reviews from Amazon.com. Second opinions from top to bottom. Crazy movies are fun. They're not your first, but they're gonna be a second. From the depths of Amazon they come. Second opinions for everyone. Second opinions. These are people who really enjoyed Anaconda. Sean James writes... What surprised me about Anaconda is the amount of depth this film had. I came in expecting low-budget cheese, but was surprised by the symbolism and metaphors mixed amongst the blood and gore. Voight disappears into his character. He literally makes you think he's someone else. This guy is impressed with acting in general. <laughs> Five stars. Erica from Sarasota, Florida writes, in all caps, mind you, I love this movie, you just gotta see it. The whole snake in the water thing had me going. I love her. I was I like, I was like, dang, that snake doing all that to everybody? <laughs> if it was me, I couldn't have played in that movie because I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> All 
Although I wouldn't be scared because it was fake. <laughs> this movie you gotta go see if you haven't. That's Erica from, uh, from Sarasota, five stars. And, uh, and my final one, this is a different kind of a rating system. This guy rates this movie a little bit differently. Um, <laughs> D. Dinodi goes, this movie is worth getting for the cast alone. Ice Cube's presence alone adds two stars. <laughs> Carrie Wurr, she adds two stars. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, two stars. <laughs> Exception, Selena. He wrote that? Yep. <laughs> Eric Stoltz, one star. <laughs> John Voight, as a rugged guy with a hidden sinister agenda, one star. <laughs> a huge CGI snake, three stars at least. <laughs> Tack on another star for the lush Amazonian backdrop, and you have a total of 12 stars. <laughs> This, is, this movie is a testament to all that is good in humanity. <laughs> oh, that person is a genius. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Wait, did you, did you pull the John Voight death? Um, no, I, oh yes, I did, yes, I did, uh, of course. So at the, end of, at the end of the movie, they get to the warehouse, the Anaconda warehouse, where Wait, Anacondas way, are built. They think there's fuel there. They think there's they fuel. They say five million times, but why? They always think there's fuel places, and it turns out there always is. There is. But they, they always lose it. They don't hit really any obstacles besides the giant snake. But there are, like, artifacts oh, we also on did, the path yes. to this warehouse. Yeah, there is also something crazy happens, which we have not talked about, which is John Voight, so uh, Cube and uh, uh, J-Lo are searching for fuel. Oh, maybe there's fuel over here. Maybe there's fuel over here. And then John Voight goes, comes, sneaks up from behind them, and with one rifle butt, somehow knocks them both unconscious. Because <laughs> it goes to black. They wait, wait, now, they don't wake up yet. <laughs> They're tied up, though. And John Voight... With snakeskin. With snake... Oh, is that what it was? Okay, yeah. snakeskin. They're tied up on the ground of the warehouse, and John Voight has bled a monkey... Yes. ...into a bucket, and it's a single monkey that has probably six gallons of blood in it. It's a big monkey. It's a small monkey, though, but it's got, like... It's basically just only full of blood. No organs, no bones, just... I'm pretty well, sure we, just a we monkey. Are, we are assuming... Where he could have cut a couple monkeys, and that was the last monkey he uh, okay. cut. So then I, he goes, I just thought the monkey was fully engorged. Yeah, perhaps. Yes. All the blood had gone to its penis, you mean? So there is a giant monkey boner? Is that what you say? My parents saw are in J-Lo. the back. Yeah, he saw Parents it. are in the back while I say monkey boner. <laughs> um, they so wouldn't have goes, it any other way. <laughs> like your parents have never seen a monkey boner. Uh, they so saw J-Lo's goes, butt. Time to wake up. Splash. <laughs> And he drenches blood. them in monkey blood. Which, that action calls the snake. Meanwhile, the monkey has been bleeding there for a long time. The snake could have come at any point when that monkey was cut. But it was but almost like a mix of like ice cube sweat. I mean, do you think about you guys, by the way, the snake has been after human beings. Beans. 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 Human beings the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So why did he so need the why, monkey blood? Yeah. yeah, no, no, I agree. No, no. And also, why not just stab one of them to bleed? By the way, I would argue why that... Find a monkey, give it a boner, bleed it. Right. I mean, you got to figure, like, ten minutes of just John Voight jerking a monkey off. <laughs> the power the rated director's edition. Um, I will say, I will say that no, no animal, no snake has attacked anyone that's bleeding in the whole movie. Like, that is the thing. Nobody has been bleeding that the snake attacked. We can all agree to that. Oh yeah, it's not like it's. Here's the thing: uh, uh, anacondas are not vampires. No, they're not like blood. Or, or maybe it. it's a Jaws thing. Maybe this movie is basically just a Jaws ripoff. Maybe it's just like I mean, blood in the water. That's insulting to even the word ripoff. I mean, it is. It, well, this is this is the POV that we talked about. This is not the full John Voight death scene. Okay, but, so John Voight, then the snake eats John Voight, and then well, well here you go. You're okay. gonna see how he eats John Voight. How they got the camera in here, we will never know. All right, here we go. The camera is inside the face. 
And that is how he eats him up. That's all I got of that scene. Just, uh, well, sorry. He eats him. He eats the whole body. I mean, that is just some fucking gross shit. And the then, camera is inside the snake's body. And then afterwards, uh, the snake barfs John Voight back out. Amazing. This is what we were talking about earlier. John Voight flumps to the ground, leans just straight against J-Lo, who for some reason does not back up. No, not at all. She allows him to kind of slump against her, and then he kind of backs up, and he winks. He's like, like, hey, babe. Well, even when, even when, even when J Lo is seducing John Voight, like he knows it, like we're real that he knows it, and he still like goes in for another kiss. He's like, I need it, like. Cause he's a snake. He is a snake. <laughs> he's just a snake. <laughs> Did we miss anything? Did we miss anything that we need to talk about? Oh God. What? What? Oh, oh yes. That, that was a good. One so of the this, best visuals in the movie is the snake drives, drives by the camera. And, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a Toyota Celica. Honk, honk. <laughs> and the snake, you can see Owen Wilson's outline, but he's outlined like Han Solo in Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> like his mouth is open, like, oh, oh, you got me. It's like in Nightmare on Elm Street when the face comes out of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> but then meanwhile, two seconds later, he goes right after the next person. He, he has a full belly full of Wilson over there. Yeah. Or as his character's name, Gary. <laughs> Gary! I just wrote down large well, words, Gary. Well, that's the Gary. thing about Owen Wilson movies. Ten minutes later, you're hungry for another. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I will say that it looked, it looked more realistic. It looked more realistic than when Marley ate him in Marley and Me. <laughs> um, I highly recommend that you see this movie. I think it's it's worth its its weight. And I actually was watching it again, again, uh, again. I was watching it again today for pulling clips. And I was like, it's actually even better the second time. Like knowing where it's going, I'm like, oh, I'm enjoying this even more. Oh, so my... you were surprised during the first time you watched it of all the twists and turns. I was just kind of like, when is this gonna happen? I got to enjoy some of the more nuanced symbolism and metaphors. Sure. The fact that they were tied up. You have to worry about following a plot like that. Yeah. I think the it, yeah. The, I mean, do you think the symbolism is that the snake is like like the snake in the in the book of Genesis, the snake that tempts man to eat of forbidden fruit? I mean, it's the Jason, snake of the devil. If I was a right? hammer and you were a nail, I'd be hitting you on the head. I don't think we can recover from that. Uh, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I'm just curious if the tribe people signed releases before... <laughs> They, they find the footage. tribe at they the end. Miss. They do find the, tr the people of the mist. The people of the mist, they come out of the mist. <laughs> and they clearly have no problem with these snakes. I think they live in harmony with the snakes. Um, and I guess they get their footage. Um, I guess. I don't know. I'm guessing. <laughs> well, she does, doesn't at the end she say, get the camera yeah. or something yeah. like that? Yo, yeah. yeah, oh, the last lines are, um, roll film. And he goes, camera rolling. <laughs> Credits. And then it's, and it's the boat going into the sunset. Yeah. Didn't the boat get destroyed? The tree was okay. That's a strong boat. That's, maybe that's the reason they, that Mateo thought that boat could hold a 40-foot snake that can fly. I really do wonder that if... I, really, we, I don't think we figured out, and I don't think we'll, anybody will ever figure out, what the exact plan was between Mateo, Voigt, and Trejo. They were just buddies, and I guess they couldn't afford a boat themselves? They were just independent snake hunters who teamed Mateo up? Mateo had a, a boat. A prequel. I want a prequel. Mateo, you're right. Mateo had a boat. A prequel that and ends And they had with... a snake factory. I want a prequel that ends with so that, that picture that their... being taken. Well, right? You know an what? entire movie that's about John Voight, Mateo, and Trejo. Fucking snake hunters in the Amazon, just fucking chicks and nailing snakes. Sadly... Sadly, they, no one thought of that because the film was followed by three sequels, Anaconda's The Hunt for Blood Orchid, and then a two TV movies, Anaconda 3 Offspring, and Anaconda's Trail of Blood. So they have not gone back. The they, snake in this movie is worse than the snake in that sci-fi movie with the giant snake in it, which if you've seen that is absolute garbage. <laughs> like the dummies who made that snake watch this movie and were like, we can do this better. We can get that. 
And they didn't even have to have Ford Stoltz and all of his bullshit. Oh, um, I will well, say this. I, just any time we talk about Stoltz, I just want to say, go and find all of the Marty. photographs and everything of Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly. Humorless in portrayal of Marty Future. McFly, apparently. Yep. Humorless. Yeah. They shot almost all of Back to the Future with Eric Stoltz in the Marty McFly role. Killed it and reshot it with Michael J. Fox. And and you think like, oh, they didn't shoot that much. There's so many pictures of him from almost every scene it's, in the it's movie. Three quarters like, of the movie they yeah. shot. Three quarters of the movie. They like shot eight weeks with him and go, ah, oh, scrap it. <laughs> because it was too dark. I want them to release that. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. We really appreciate. It. This has been amazing. Uh, a big thank you to Michael Ian Black. That is all for our live episode, live from the Bell House. Big thanks to Michael Ian Black. Um, he's amazing. You can follow him on Twitter. Also, he has a great book out called You're Not Doing It Right. This book is great. I know June is a huge fan of it, as am I. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Paul Shear. You can follow June at Miss June Diane. Uh, that is all. We will see you next time on How Did This Get Made. How did this get made?